I'm not getting into the 2022 or 2024. Whoever is my president, that's my president. And Joe Biden is my president right now. Well, I guess that's what happens when he's polling at 19 percent in West Virginia. Joining us now with reaction, though, a member of the Senate Armed Services and Veterans Affairs Committee, Alabama Senator Tommy Tuberville. Senator, I'm going to ask you the same softball question that Chuck Todd asked uh, your colleague there from West Virginia. What party would you like to see control the Senate after November? Well, it's not that we we won't. We better have uh the Republicans uh, in charge of the Senate uh, after November, because we don't, Sean. We got to go th through this for two more years, and I don't think the American people, the American taxpayers, can stand it. All this spending, all the regulation right now, and they're trying to even do more with this new reconciliation. Yeah, see, it wasn't that tough of a question. I don't know why your colleague there had a tough question. He's the chairman of a committee, and he got asked what party he wants to control. He's like, I don't know. I think he should just ask Tommy Tuberville how to answer that question. Maybe you can give us some pointers. But I do want to get on to the, to the deal at hand. Build Back Better was this big spending deal. I thought it was left for dead. Then they strike a deal. Manchin and Senator Schumer, the majority leader, strike a deal. They put a new bumper sticker on it. They spend billions of dollars on climate initiatives, raise taxes, Massive increases to the IRS and, and call it an inflation, bill, you know, reduction act. Is there anything Republicans can do at this point to stop it? Well, keep our fingers crossed. That's pretty much all we can do. We we thought we had this stopped. Uh, Manchin has done. He did one great thing, not just for our country, but for our world when he blocked the the uh, so-called filibuster uh, from happening uh, back about six months ago. And. That would have been a huge disaster, but it looks like they've just pretty much just talked him into something that I don't know whether he even believes in it because, you know, he's from a energy state, Sean, and he's the chairman of the, the energy committee here in the Senate. And he tried to give an explanation yesterday of, you know, they're giving us some, some ways, the Biden administration has given us a few ways to, to drill a little bit more oil or, or do something a little bit different to, to increase oil production. It looks like he was convinced in that area to make it happen, but what about the 80,000 IRS agents that, uh, uh, that they're going to hire? They're going to have one for every Republican in this country if they keep on with this, uh, uh, this scenario in terms of IRS. But, uh, you know, I, I haven't talked to Joe. Hopefully I'll talk to him in the next 24 hours and see what, what's going on. But uh, this, will be a, this will be a fight this week, uh, but we'll just sit back and watch the Democrats fight amongst each other because we have no say-so. It's only a 50-vote count. Well, let me ask you this, though, Senator, because considering everything that's in this bill, what you just mentioned, also the fact that it will raise taxes, is there any chance making the case for Democrats who are up for re-election that they shouldn't vote for the bill? Because they're going to have to defend that at a time when inflation is at a 40-year high. Well, our supply chain is awful as we speak. It's getting a little bit better. Uh, but the Democrats haven't done anything to make it better. They just sat back and watched it with, with an idea of what do we do. Uh, inflation is rampant. I was in Alabama this weekend, and it, it, you know, we talk about 9, 10, 15 percent inflation. This, we're talking more 25, 30 percent inflation on most items, groceries, uh, rent, uh, uh, anything, energy, anything that the people really have to use inflation just out the roof. And if they want to if they want to really hurt us, put this 15 percent tax on manufacturing. President Trump had them moving back to the country. Now they're trying to run them back overseas. Uh, that's exactly what will do what will happen. And it's it's just the exact opposite of what we need to do. I don't know. I don't know what these people are thinking. I really don't. I've sat here for a year and a half going, uh, are they going to do anything for the American people. They do everything for everybody else, but not for the taxpayers of this country. And that's who runs this country, the hardworking people that pay the taxes. But the Democrats have not done one thing uh, for the taxpayers of this country. And it's going to show up in November. Hopefully it does, because if it doesn't, uh, we're in serious trouble. Yeah. Senator, I want to switch gears. Senate Republicans blocked this thing called a PACT Act, which would have secured health care funds for veterans dealing with issues stemming from burn pits, primarily uh, Afghanistan and Iraq. A lot of folks even go back to, to Vietnam. Um, Senator Pat Toomey said that there is, quote, a completely unnecessary budget gimmick in the underlying text of the PACT Act. This gimmick allows $400 billion in spending completely unrelated to veterans care. Okay, you are one of the no votes on this. You're on the Armed Services Committee. You're on the Veterans Committee. What is the, the gimmick that is concerning, and where do things stand right now with the bill? 
Well, I'll tell you exactly how this happened. For a year and a half, we have been working in the Veterans Affairs Committee on helping the veterans, not just the veterans, the burn pits, but all veterans. We're trying to get the VA straight. We're trying to help it. You know, it's the biggest health care system in the world. It is massive, and we've got to help our veterans. That's one of the reasons I came to Washington, D.C. My dad was a vet. He died in the military. And uh, so we have been working for a year and a half on this PACT Act, which helps the burn pit victims. It's going to be very expensive. We all know that. But we get about three-fourths of the way done with it, and Schumer says, well, I'm going to finish it the rest of the way. So he takes it from us. We have nothing else to do with it. And he throws this discretionary spending in there, which is the gimmick that uh, Senator Toomey is talking about, of, of $400 billion. In other words, take discretionary spending and put it in, in uh, this PACT Act and then be able to fill up the discretionary with a $400 billion more to spend anywhere they want. It's a disaster. It's not going to work. We want to help the veterans. That's what this bill is about. We don't want pork in it. We don't want uh, spending that will drive up inflation. We want to help the veterans. And I've told all the veterans that we're going to get this passed, but we're going to get it passed where it will help them uh, overcome some of this burn, these burn pit problems and get people in the right scenario. Sean, as we speak, the VA has 200,000 people in line ready for treatment. When this PAC Act uh, passes, there's going to be two million more that go into the system. And we want to make sure we're prepared for that. And so I've voted against it every time. And people are going, you're on the Veterans Committee. Why are you voting against this? Because it's not the right bill that we need. We need the right thing for the veterans. We don't need to put a showcase out there for the Schumer and the Democrats. We need to put a bill out there that actually works. What an idea, right? Washington, D.C. actually does something that works for the people of this country. So Chuck Schumer is expected to bring this to the floor on Tuesday. Will you vote against it again? I'll vote against it if we've still got that $400 billion discretionary money that he wants to use for whatever, uh, use for the people of New York, not on the veterans. Uh, I won't, I won't, we'll, get, we'll get one passed. I don't know when it's going to happen. We're going to get one passed to where it's going to actually help the veterans. Now, it could be this week. It could be when we come back. Uh, now, my one vote might not block it. Uh, some of my Senate uh, colleagues on the Republican side might vote for it uh, the way it is. But I've been telling them all along, this is not what we want. I'm on the committee. I've been listening to all this. This is not going to help our veterans. It's just going to put a, a facade over it, and it's going to look like we helped them, but it's not going to help them the way it should help them. So let's get the bill the right way and then pass it. Okay. Senator, real quick, before we let you go, uh, Nancy Pelosi's on what I'm like to call her farewell tour through Asia uh, before she gets kicked out of Congress after Republicans take the majority back. Uh, there are serious reports today that she is, in fact, going to go to Taiwan. Should she go? And what, what, are, what kind of consequences are we prepared to accept because of that visit? Well, the only good thing she's going over there for our side is she can't pass any more taxes on the American people. Uh, that would be one good thing. But, uh, you know, I went, what, five or six months ago, I went to Taiwan with four other, three or four other senators. China, the China uh, ambassador called us. Uh, Chinese uh, uh, delegation was calling our office, don't come, don't come. Uh, we're not going to allow you to come. We get on the plane, we fly over there. They flew some jets over. Uh, but Ty Taiwan needs us to come. They, we need to show our support. Uh, they're not stupid enough. China's not stupid enough to do something crazy. Uh, they, they, they talk a big game, but uh, we need to stand up for the, uh, the American people. We need to stand up for our allies. We need to stand up for Taiwan. And we need, need to show strength. Biden has showed nothing but, but being soft since he's been in there. We have to show strength. And uh, I hate to say this, Nancy Pelosi going over, show strength for the American people and for our country. And uh, uh, she needs to go. Uh, she says she's going. She does not need to back out. Uh, uh, that'd be the worst thing to do. And just show China, hey, we mean business. We're, we're going over to show our friends, Taiwan, that we're friends and that we're going to help all we can. And we will help all we can. Okay. Senator Tommy Tuberville, thank you for joining us. Really appreciate it. All right. Thank you very much. Hey, guys, it's Rob Carson. With inflation at its highest level in 40 years and interest rates skyrocketing, your retirement plans are in danger. 
Well, our friends at American Hartford Gold can help show you how to protect your savings and retirement accounts by diversifying your portfolio with physical gold and silver. Yeah. If you call them right now, they have a special offer. They will give you a free gold coin on your first qualifying order. So don't wait. Call now. Here's the number. 866-935-4309. That's 866-935-4309. Or text Newsmax to 65532. That's Newsmax to 65532. Thank you. 